Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. My very special guests are uh, Pastor Lindsay Williams and Dr. Rodrigo Rodriguez. Uh, where exactly do we go from here, I wonder? Just exactly how um, have you uh, come through your career, Dr. Rodriguez, to create this hospital? What, did you Were you once a very conventional doctor, doing all the normal things, prescribing drugs, and then changed your mind at some point in your life, or had you always been trying to uh, do this kind of work? Well, let me tell you, I was very fortunate because I was raised in a very traditional family where my father worked and my mother took care of the house, and uh, which was a luxury that we hardly can afford today. We used to have a housewife cooking, preparing foods from scratch, and feeding the children and the family. That's a luxury that, unfortunately, that's one, the beginning of some of our problems that we, uh, many people cannot afford because everybody has to work uh, to meet, uh, to meet um, uh, the the. the the needs, the financial needs of the family. But that was on one hand. On the other hand, both my parents were very intuitive about health. My father was an accountant. And I remember my father telling my mother time to time remarks about the food that was put at the table. And he would say, I don't want you to give red meat to children that often because it's not good for the children. I don't know how he got all this knowledge, but he used to say that. He used to say uh, they need to eat more legumes, they need to eat more grains, they need to eat more of this. Uh, Soda pop was absolutely forbidden. I mean, we could not even sneak out and get one, because we knew we'd be in big problem with, with my father. Uh, sugars and that type of thing were out of the question. So if you wanted anything like a dessert or something like a sweet, well, they would give you an an orange, and they would give you a full orange. So you peel the orange and you eat it, or you get a banana, or you get an apple, something like that. And uh, that, of course, gives you, it helps you a lot, because, of course, uh, I could, uh, I have never really been sick in my life. I'm 69 years old, and I have really never had any any serious problem with my health, which I again have to thank my parents for it. But then when I went to medical school, I was, as you said, kind of a classic doctor in in medical school. And when I finished, I did my internship in Canada. I was very proud of that. And then I went into a very, very technical medical specialty, which is nuclear medicine. And when I started doing nuclear medicine, uh, after I finished, I had been invited already to to New York, to uh, St. Louis, Missouri, to Germany, to do different type of uh, of trainings, and I I really felt proud of what I had done. And then there's this group that were the owners of an alternative medicine clinic in Tijuana. And I was called to help them to get the nuclear medicine set up. I came with the condition that I would not be here more than six months, that I was very happy with what I was doing, and because they were my friends, I would be happy to help them to get everything uh, up and to uh, help them find somebody to run the the place. And while I was in those six months, uh, the clinic was working with Lettrell back in the 1970s. I'm talking of 1976. Uh, the clinic was working with, with Lettrell, and then there was a request from the U.S. Congress uh, to submit cases treated with Lettrell where you could really prove that they had improved. So I was asked, why don't you take a look at your scans and tell us which cases are the best? So I went through the scans and checked it, everything out, and then I picked the cases that I thought were very good, unquestionably doing much better that we're really to brag about and to and to use as some proof that this therapy was working. But when I started reviewing all these files, <clears throat> it came across 
that uh, most of the cases came from one single physician in that clinic. The clinic had about five doctors. Most of the cases came from just one doctor. And it took me like uh, half a second to go to her office. The minute I realized this, she was a lady doctor. I went immediately back to her office and I said, look, this is what I'm finding. These are the results that I found. Most people were in your office. So obviously you know something. The rest of us don't. And she answered with one word. She said nutrition. And to be honest, my immediate comment was, oh, come on, don't tell me that because of nutrition, you're going to cure cancer. And she started showing me. She started showing me what she did. She really knew a lot. She had a knowledge on, on uh, homeopathics. She had a, a, a knowledge about herbals and herbal extracts and yes, nutrition and all these modalities. And I started going with her just like every day to her office to see how she saw and what she did. And I became more and more interested because I was really impressed. On the other hand, let me tell you that by that point in my career, I was uh, already uh, having second thoughts about what we were doing with really with cancer. Because in nuclear medicine, you see the diagnosis of cancer. And then when you go to the meetings and you talk to all the oncologists, and you really see that th there is not really one way to treat a cancer. I mean, if you have cancer and you go to Sloan Kettering, they're going to give you one protocol. If you then fly to MD Anderson, they might give you another one. If then you go to Berkeley, they might give you another one. And if you have appendix, no matter where you go, no matter where you go in the world, they're going to tell you, you you have to have an appendectomy, which means we know how to cure it. But when one reputable place gives you one treatment and, the, and, and, and in the other building they tell you something different, it means we don't really know how to cure cancer, which is really the bottom line. Uh, we, as, as humankind, still are fighting to find a cure for cancer. So I was disappointed about that. And I used to make the comment, if I ever get cancer, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I know what I'm not going to do, and I'm not going to do this sort of therapy, which is devastating for, for, for people, and that at the end of the day, it really did, didn't accomplish anything. So I worked with this lady more and more, and I was so enthusiastic about it that she proposed me as a medical director. What was going to be six months ended up being five years. And after five years, with all the team of people that we were working together since 1976, we decided we needed a place where we could do what we wanted to do, detoxification and enemas and fasting and the type of diets that we needed and the type of intravenous uh, solutions that we wanted, etc., etc. And that's how uh, BioCare Hospital was uh, purposely built had opened in 1985. And for, since 1985, we're working out of the same building. So, so how long has this hospital been running for? How long? I, I didn't get it. How long have you been running uh, your hospital here? Oh, since 1985. This hospital has been since 1985. On the other hand, if you want to be a pediatrician, well, after medical school, you go to a pediatric hospital. If you want to be an obstetrician, well, after medical school, you go to an obstetrics clinic. But if you want to do complementary medicine, if you want to do medicine, there is not such a place. So what we started doing is taking turns and going to different places. And we had one of us, let's say, flying to Australia because there used to be a very good Chinese acupuncturist there. I'm talking of 1980. Or going to the Netherlands to see a, a technique on medical microscopy. Or going to different places to learn different modalities and, and get help from other people. Uh, we have worked with engineers, 
with chemists, with other people to help us sort out the answers for, for our patients. Some of the modalities are highly technical, like whole body hyperthermia. So we were taking advantage of people that we knew, like in the open heart surgery world, in the highly technological world of medicine, to get the type of machines and the type of procedures that we wanted <coughs> and work with people to uh, uh, get all these modalities going. And lately, for example, I would say in the last uh, three, four years, stem cell therapy has come about and we're very enthusiastic about what stem cell therapy can do. Now, the stem cell therapy that we do has nothing to do with embryonic cells. I wouldn't touch that. I, I wouldn't go close to it for two reasons. One, because of eth ethical reasons, but the other is because I don't think that is the answer. But God knows how to put things in order. And one of the great things that uh, has come uh, I mean, to light is that we used to think that stem cells we only produce when we were fetus. No, it, it turns out that we keep doing stem cells all throughout our lives. And we can find them in, in mesenchymal tissue, like the fat under the skin, in the bone marrow, or even in peripheral blood. So if I take, let's say, the, if I take this minute a blood sample from your own vein, I can separate stem cells and I can put them together, I can excite them so they, so they become more active, and I will inject them back into your body. Now, when I use this, which is called autologous stem cell, in which the same person, autologous means that the donor is the recipient. You give the cells that you're going to receive. Now, to do this successful, you remember that when you're going to have laboratory work, the laboratory always tells you you have to, fa to, to fast overnight. The fasting uh, limits the amount of fats and certain proteins in the blood and makes it easier to separate blood components. That's why the laboratory always asks you to fast before making laboratory testing. Well, we do a longer fast and a, and a different type of fast because we really want to be able to take the, the, the stem cells out of your system. And we could get active white blood cells for that matter, like the killer cells that we do in cancer, and produce uh, dendritic cells that are, can, can be given back to the person as if it were a vaccine, injecting small amounts under the skin every so often to keep your immune system active. But in the case of stem cells, we separate these stem cells, we concentrate them, we produce a solution, uh, and we inject it back into your body to restore and help a lot of functions that many times we thought, I'm getting old. You see, that's one of the big problems also of modern medicine. You go to the doctor and you say, you know what, doctor, I don't feel as energetic, and say, you're getting old. Well, and I have a little bit of high blood pressure. Well, yes, that's because of your age. Well, and I feel this. Everything they blame on, on aging. And if you read the Bible, you're going to say that, no, we were not meant to be sick and suffering. We were meant to function well. And at the end of the, our lives, then things are going to happen. But we're, we don't have to live. I mean, people live from the 40s and and 50s on medication for the rest of their lives because there is no cure, period. And that's what I tell many, many people. I mean, have you ever noticed that when you go to see the doctor and he gives you a prescription, you say how long you're going to take it for, the doctor always says forever. No matter how long you're going to live, 20 years, you have to take it because we're going to control, quote, unquote. They never tell you, you know, if you follow this pathway, you can conquer diabetes, you can conquer high blood pressure, you can conquer all these things and be healthy again. Now, we always give them medication. And to make it worse, that medication many times has side effects 
that will require other medication. And very soon, you see people that take 10, 15, 20 tablets a day, and many times, much, many more. <laughs> so that's uh, what, what we do. I'm really enthusiastic about what I do. I really love the results. And, uh, and the only thing I'd like to see is people doing a lot more preventative, people being aware of how much potential you have within your power to be healthy, to be functional, and to have a long, long, healthy life. Believe you know, it or not, I don't like to see these people. But uh, I love people that call me and ask questions and that's for guidance on how they can keep on doing something. Okay, we're going to break. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. It's our final segment here with uh, Dr. Rodrigo Rodriguez and his patient, Pastor Lindsay Williams. He's been doing remarkably li- uh, little of the talking, considering how many times he's been on the interviews. Okay, well, we only have one final segment here, guys, and uh, what I would like to do is offer you the opportunity to say some things that maybe you don't normally talk about. Perhaps it doesn't come up in the conversation ordinarily. Perhaps you're afraid to say it. Perhaps maybe people might judge you for talking about it. Is there anything of that of that nature that you'd really like to discuss? Anything that's on your mind of, of great importance to you? Let me tell you something that uh, <clears throat> I feel gives people the opportunity to say either I want to know more or I don't think this is going in the right direction, whatever. Uh, I don't want this to be a one-way conversation uh, at all. One thing that I think is important for people to know is that we have a website, and that website has a way to communicate directly to me on an email. I welcome emails. I welcome comments. I welcome questions. I don't know. I don't need to know who you are, and I'm never going to charge you anything. But I really feel that this is kind of a crusade. We have to know more. We have to spread the word. We have to let people find out and ask questions. So I would ask anybody that's listening to the show to go to www.biocarehospital.com. You go to the site, and then you click for a question. And you can say whatever. You can tell me your comments. You can ask a question. You can say, I'm with this sort of a health problem. Is there anything I can do very easy? You can say, about anything that's health-related. I answer all my emails personally, and I really think that that's kind of a duty. Uh, Same as Pastor Williams has sharing with people what he knows about things for the future in terms of financial or oil or these things that matter to all of us. The same way I want you to have somewhere to go and ask a medical or health-related question and know that you're going to have an honest-to-God answer. I will help you out. I'll be happy to do that. I will guide you to reading. I will guide you to things to do that are very easy. And again, this is completely free of charge. I want people to know that we're in this mainly because we believe in this. And because I know that if we made a radical change in what we eat and how we live and decided to stop smoking as a nation and just being a little bit more careful about how we live, I can tell you that in the next 10 years, cancer rate is going to drop to one half. So... This is absolutely preventable. What, 
what I don't like about what I do is see people with deadly diseases that could have been prevented and nobody told them. And again, I don't want to see you as a patient, but I would love to see you as a friend. And I have many people that I talk to on the street and or finding places, and they say, Dr. Rodriguez, thank you very much. You told me about uh, vitamin E, or you told me about my mother, and we took your advice, and, and she did better, etc. That that really makes my day. That really uh, that that's what I what I love. And I think, same as Pastor William says, Pastor Williams is always talking about how how grateful he is for the opportunity to know what he knows because he has been able to share all this information with the people. And same for me. I, I have been doing all this work and all this research and wouldn't really serve any pur- purpose if I were not willing to share it with anyone that comes around. So please make sure that you write down that uh, web page and if you have any questions, please drop the question. <clears throat> if, you, if you happen to find anyone you know, a friend, or, 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 or anybody for that matter, and, and makes a comment and you think might get a benefit from asking a health question, give them the site so they can ask their question. But uh, one thing I can tell you, you have a friend in here and a health advisor that will always be happy to help you. Vinny, uh, every person in the listening audience to American Freedom Radio today will, at some point in their life, need International BioCare Hospital and Health Center. I would like to beg you to please, you have pencil and paper there, please jot down their toll-free number. Uh, all over the United States of America, even though the call is answered in Mexico, please jot this number down. It's toll-free. The number is one. 1- 800-701-7345. Again, that's 800-701-7345. Now, here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to talk with the person that answers the phone and ask them for their beautiful multicolor booklet, which is 58 pages long. It mentions the different treatments that are given. It talks about the hospital. You'll see beautiful pictures now, maybe you say, I don't have cancer right now today. I don't have heart disease today. No, but you may tomorrow. I didn't think six months ago there'd be anything wrong with me either. In fact, I've been so healthy that probably for 25 to 30 years I haven't been to a doctor. When I got sick, I got so sick, uh, I thought I was going to die. I called Dr. Rodriguez. I've been told where to call. Now, please, ask them for their 58-page brochure. You will need it for a friend or a neighbor who may have cancer, heart problems, degenerative diseases of some type. You may need it yourself. At some point, you will. Again, that toll-free number, 1-800-701-7345, and ask them for their beautiful 58-page brochure. They will also send you some things on the Alavizartos treatment if you want it. You will need this at some point in your life. And, Vinny, it has been a privilege today. You asked me, you said a moment ago, uh, Pastor Williams has been kind of quiet today. Listen, with the wisdom and the knowledge of Dr. Rodriguez, I can't do anything but be quiet. I mean, this man has such knowledge and intuition, uh, information. I had to be quiet and let him talk today. So, folks, let me beg you again, please, even though you may not need it right this second, Please get this beautiful brochure from International BioCare Hospital and Health Center. Once again, I just don't know how to say enough. You are going to need this, especially when Obamacare fails next year. 800-701-7345 or on the web, www.biocarehospital.com. Where have you ever heard the director, the founder, and a man of this wisdom as he sought off for speaking engagements around the world, where would you ever find a man of this quality to be able to say, will you please contact me personally? Mm. Well, you know, you'd probably have to search far and wide, and 
it occurs to me that most of the uh, American friends that I've had have noticed the the great difference of when you go outside of the United States, just how much easier it is to get along with people and talk to people and get business done and th- and things like that. Because, uh, uh, well, basically, people are willing to open the doors of the shop even when the shop is closed, as it were. And I am very grateful to the both of you for coming on uh, the show with me today. And uh, I very much hope that, uh, Pastor, you're feeling a lot better and uh, you'll be back to uh, full steam ahead uh, as soon as humanly possible. And I'm sure with the expertise of uh, Dr. Rodriguez there, I don't think there's any other possible way to go. So thank you very much. Well, Vinny, if you want a personal endorsement of the BioCare Hospital, of a person who has actually been here and gotten well as a result of it, please go to Lindsay williams.net l-i-n-d-s-e-y williams.net you will find a lengthy endorsement information about the hospital pictures and Vinny, thank you personally for the privilege of trusting me enough to let me have dr rodriguez and i on together today on your program all right and uh dr rodriguez thank you thank you as well it's been it's been a great honor and a pleasure Thank you very much. Thank you for the privilege. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, the website, ladies and gentlemen, is biocarehospital.com. That's biocarehospital.com. That toll free number again is 1 800 701 7345. That's 1 800 701 7345. Thank you very much for listening, ladies and gentlemen. We hope you're feeling better, and we hope everything will turn out all right in the end. Apparently, it all does, and if it's not all right, then it's not the end. We'll see you again sometime. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. To the Vinnie Eastwood Show, my very special guests are uh, Pastor Lindsay Williams and Dr. Rodrigo Rodriguez. Uh, where exactly do we go from here, I wonder? Just exactly how um, have you uh, come through your career, Dr. Rodriguez, to create this hospital? What, did you Were you once a very conventional doctor, doing all the normal things, prescribing drugs, and then changed your mind at some point in your life, or had you always been trying to uh, do this kind of work? Well, let me tell you, I was very fortunate because I was raised in a very traditional family where my father worked and my mother took care of the house, and uh, which was a luxury that we hardly can afford today. We used to have a housewife cooking, preparing foods from scratch, and feeding the children and the family. That's a luxury that, unfortunately, that's one, the beginning of some of our problems that we, uh, many people cannot afford because everybody has to work uh, to, make, to meet um, uh, the the. the the needs, the financial needs of the family. But that was on one hand. On the other hand, both my parents were very intuitive about health. My father was an accountant. And I remember my father telling my mother time to time remarks about the food that was put at the table. And he'd say, I don't want you to give red meat to children that often because it's not good for the children. I don't know how he got all this new knowledge, but he used to say that. He used to say uh, they need to eat more legumes, they need to eat more grains, they need to eat more of this. Uh, soda pop was absolutely forbidden. I mean, we could not even sneak out and get one, <clears throat> because we knew we'd be in big problem with, with my father. Uh, sugars and that type of thing were out of the question. So if you wanted anything like a dessert or something like a sweet, well, they would give you an an orange, and they would give you a full orange. So you peel the orange and you eat it, or you get a banana, or you get an apple, something like that. And uh, that, of course, gives you 
it helps you a lot because, of course, uh, I could, uh, I have never really been sick in my life. I'm 69 years old, and I have really never had any, when to get the nuclear medicine set up. I came with the condition that I would not be here more than six months, that I was very happy with what I was doing, and because they were my friends, I would be happy to help them to get everything uh, up and to uh, help them find somebody to run the, the place. And while I was in those six months, uh, the clinic was working with Lettrell back in the 1970s. I'm talking of 1976. Uh, the clinic was working with, with Lettrell, and then there was a request from the U.S. Congress uh, to submit cases treated with Lettrell where you could really prove that they had improved. So I was asked, why don't you take a look at your scans and tell us which cases have any serious problem with my health, and which I, again, have to thank my parents for it. But then when I went to medical school, I was, as you said, kind of a classic doctor in, in medical school. And when I finished, I did my internship in Canada. I was very proud of that. And then I went into a very, very technical medical specialty, which is nuclear medicine. And when I started doing nuclear medicine, uh, after I finished, I had been invited already to, to New York, to uh, St. Louis, Missouri, to Germany, to do different type of, uh, of trainings. And I, I really felt proud of what I had done. And then <clears throat> there's this group that were the owners of an alternative medicine clinic in Tijuana. And I was called to help.